Number four on the test, it's going to be a very, very similar word problem. And the really awesome thing about this problem on the test is that instead of saying determine the price of general admission tickets, it's going to say write the system of equations. You do not have to solve, only write the equations. So the nice thing about number four on the test is that you don't have to fully solve the problem, you just have to write the equations. And if we can figure out how to write the equations for this particular word problem, you should be fine for the word problem on the test. So what I noticed when I read through here is that there's really two main pieces of information. There's information about the first night and there's information about the second night. On the first night, 140 student tickets were sold, 180 general admission tickets were sold, and we collected a total of $2,255. On the second night, 80 student tickets were sold, 100 general admission tickets were sold, and we collected a total of 1265 So one of our equations is going to be all about the first night, the other equation is going to be all about the second night. So first night, 140 per price of the tickets. So if I sell 140 tickets at $4 each, if you did 140 times four, that would tell you how much money you collected in student tickets. So 140 times X, that's how much money we collected for student tickets. 180 times y, that's how much money we collected from the general admission tickets, and that totaled $2,255. So number times price plus number times price equals total price. Same thing for the second night. Number times price plus number times price equals total amount of money collected. And on the test, you would then be done. You don't have to do anything else, you just have to write those equations. On the test, I think it's something like, on Saturday night, you sold this many of thing A and this many of thing B and collected this much money. On Sunday, you sold this much of thing A, this much of thing B and collected this much money. So if you understand how to do this one with the first night, the second night, and the two types of tickets, you should be absolutely fine creating the equations for the problem on the test. Let's go over number eight. Number eight will be multiple choice. It's also going to say on the test, you must show your work. And I will tell you right now that this question is going to be worth six points on the test. That's a lot of points for one question. One of those points is for the correct answer. The other five points are for your work. So if you've got solid work shown, even if you happen to pick the wrong answer, you're still going to get the majority of the points for the problem. Similarly, let's say you're really good at eeny, meeny, miny, mo, and you pick the correct answer but don't show any work. If you have the correct answer with no work, I am going to write minus five on your paper and take five points off because you didn't show me any work. So please do not lose points when all you have to do is show your work and you get your points. When you start this problem, you really have to think about two steps ahead. So we need to eliminate a variable, but we need to eliminate that variable twice. So we could probably eliminate the x's, those will eliminate very easily here and here, but then we have to think about what would we do for the next step. For the next step, we would need to eliminate the x's again. We'd probably have to take this one times six and that one. So we could definitely eliminate the x's if we wanted to. We could also pretty easily eliminate the z's if we wanted to. We could multiply the bottom by two so that we had two z and negative two z. Then we could multiply the middle one times two so that we had negative four z and positive four z. So do you want to do z's or x's? x's? 
Cs. I did not get a consensus. We'll do Xs. So for the Xs, first I'm going to add these first two equations because they are perfectly ready. X and negative X, they eliminate 5Y, 6Y, that is 11Y. Negative 4Z and 2Z is negative 2Z. Negative 4 and negative 12 is negative 16. So I added those together and got that thing over there. Now I need to multiply the middle equation by 6. That will give me negative 6x plus 36y plus 12z equals, uh, what is negative 12 times 6? Negative 72. And we use the bottom equation as is. And we get 31y plus 11z equals negative 95. Okay, here's the kind of crummy thing about this problem. Now that we have these two equations with just y and z, we need to eliminate these two over here on the right. Do you want to mess with 11 and 31? Not really. Negative 2 and 11? We're going to have to multiply the top equation by 11 and the bottom equation by 2. So we will have 121y minus 22z equals negative 176. And 62y plus 22z equals negative 190. As you're doing these problems, if you're thinking, these numbers are way too big, I must have done something wrong. You likely didn't. Sometimes when we eliminate with these three variable system, the numbers do get quite large. All right, so now we add these together. 121 and 62 is 183. So 183y equals negative 366. We do negative 366 divided by 183, and we get y equals negative 2. Okay, now this is going to be a multiple choice question. So once you get y equals negative 2, you can likely eliminate several of your answer choices. But you're still probably going to have to do a little bit more work. I think I, there's multiple answers that have the correct y value as, as the answer. So we need to plug this y equals negative 2 into either the pink or the green equation. I'm going to choose the pink equation and plug it in right there. 11 times negative 2 is negative 22. I end up getting negative 2z equals 6. So z equals negative 3. At this point, you will likely have enough information to get the correct answer using multiple choice. If for some reason there's two answers that have a y value of negative two and a an z value of negative three, you would then need to plug both of those into probably this top equation. So you'd plug your negative two in right there and your negative three in right there and figure out what your x is. One of my amazing students pointed out that my answer on the answer key for number 12 is wrong. So let's do number 12. First, we need to rearrange this top inequality. So 2y is greater than negative 4x plus 4. Divide everything by 2. And we get y is greater than negative 2x plus 2. The plus 2 tells us that we start at positive 2 on the y-axis. 
Our slope of negative two tells us that we need to go down to right one. over and over. This symbol means that we are going to do a dashed line. And we need to shade where the Y values are larger than this line. So if I put my pencil anywhere on the line, I'm putting my pencil currently at two, three, four, five, we need to shade up so we shade up here okay y is less than or equal to negative six that is a horizontal line and on my answer key i put it at positive six whoops so this horizontal line needs to be down here at negative six on the y-axis it needs to be a solid line because it's less than or equal to, and we would shade down. So what part of the graph is double shaded? The bottom right, this bottom right teeny little corner is where it's double shaded. And if you, like, I would really like it if you could try to make your shading as light as possible, and then really extra double shade the solution area so that I know that you know where the correct solution area is. So try to shade your stuff really, really light except for that final solution area. Get that shaded nice and dark.